Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars daily sports podcast. It's Tuesday, May 12th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. We are continuing our look back at the Royals' 2015 playoff run, and today we're focusing in on the American League Championship Series against the Toronto Blue Jays. The Royals were in the ALCS for the second straight year, and things got off to a good start. Kansas City won the first two games at Kauffman Stadium. A superb Game 1 pitching performance by Edinson Volquez and three relievers got them a shutout in the opener. Then the Royals overcame David Price, who'd been dealing through six innings with a misplayed fly ball in right field, followed by a keep-the-line-moving rally to win Game 2. The Royals went on to win one of three games in Toronto before returning to Kauffman for Game 6, which turned out to be a classic. You know, it's funny, in the two-year run for the Royals in the postseason, this game doesn't seem to get as much attention as like the 2014 wildcard game against Oakland or the Division Series Game 4 victory over Houston. But those games required comebacks uh, from four runs down in the eighth inning. Game 6 of the ALCS had high-stakes drama, big moments, dramatic plays, and honestly, I think it's as loud as I ever heard Kauffman Stadium when Lorenzo Cain scored the go-ahead run from first on Eric Hosmer's single, single, in the eighth inning. Then the drama shifted to closer Wade Davis. He had finished the eighth inning, then came a rain delay, and then the Royals had to bat in the eighth. When the Royals came up in the ninth, it had been more than an hour since Davis had thrown his last pitch. Would manager Ned Yost run his closer out for a second inning? You know he did. And Davis, even after the first two hitters got aboard, held the Blue Jays scoreless in the ninth. So today we're going to start with some broadcast highlights of the game. You'll hear the Fox team of Joe Buck, Harold Reynolds, and Tom Verducci making the calls. You'll hear the Hosmer single that scored Kane from first base, and then you'll hear the call of the final out, plus some celebration in the on-field interview with Wade Davis. After that, we have a clip of a conversation star columnist Vahe Gregorian and I had recently with Ned Yost on his emotions during the rain delay and why he decided to leave Wade Davis in the game. After a break, Vahe and I are joined by Sam Mellinger as we reminisce about the game. So let's get started. Here's how some of the key moments sounded on the broadcast. That's into right field. This ball is down. Going to third is Kane. Holding it first. Now Kane coming to the plate. Royals lead. He can fly. Again, another changeup. We'll talk, we'll talk about it another time. But it looks like it's a great play by Batista. He's going to cut off a double. But in this situation, you got to throw it in and let the first baseman redirect it because you have Lorenzo Cain. Now he did this against the Astros when the center fielder fell down on a ground ball to center, and he continued on. So you got to know the aggressiveness. And right there. Jersley not hesitate and send him all the way around. Yeah, but how about doing that with nobody out? Think about what we just saw. Nobody out, a single to right field. He scores from first base, and he was not running on the pitch. Amazing. Well, this would be some win for Wade Davis, sitting there for an hour plus. And it'd be some comeback by the Blue Jays if Donaldson can find one against Wade Davis. Here comes a 2-1. Left side. Moustakis. Rebels win the pennant.
back-to-back -back American League pennants for the Kansas City Royals, and off they go to the Fall Classic for a date on Tuesday night here against the New York Mets. Well, the season last year for Kansas City ended with the potential tying run at third base. Tonight, they just ended the season of Toronto with the potential tying run at third base, beginning with nobody out. And that mad dash by Lorenzo Cain, that's got a spot next to Enos Slaughter in 1946. Game seven of the World Series, beating the Boston Red Sox by scoring all the way from first base. Well, there's so many things you could talk about in this game. Mike Jersley with the call waving Lorenzo Cain. But Tom, you made such a great point when it happened. Lorenzo Cain gave him a great read. You only get as good a read as the base runner gives you. And he gave him a tremendous read. And then I go back to the top of the ninth right here with the, with the uh, Blue Jays. The 2-1 pitch to Rivera is what they're going to be discussing in their clubhouse. Ball up and out. Changes the count to 3-1. And Davis is looking for the, the strikeout the rest of the way. It was 2-2. He came back with a nasty slider. That was the difference. They talk about a white knuckle save. That was a white knuckle win for Wade Davis. And, man, what a year. What a run he's been on. And the numbers just keep piling up. Now his last 13 postseason appearances from last year's ALCS through now. No earned runs in 16 and two-thirds innings pitched. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Joe. Wade, ninth inning, first and third, none out. What was going through your mind? I mean, it got pretty bad there pretty quick, but uh, just kept telling myself we can get out of it, you know, keep making pitches. we got plenty left, and, you know, just get this win for the team. What was it like having to deal with an hour-long delay for you? Uh, it wasn't that bad. I, I, I went inside, did some work, and I stayed loose, and I made sure I was ready to come back out. Did you expect to be in the game earlier, top of the eighth inning? Yeah, I knew there was a chance. You know, Mad Dog usually gets it done, but, uh, you know, Bautista swinging a hot bat, so unfortunately, uh, got in there and got it done. Last question. You get traded here a couple of years ago. You weren't even a reliever at the start. You were in a closer about six weeks ago. What has this journey been like for you? Oh, it's been a blast. You know, I've been surrounded by a lot of good people, and I've uh, been real fortunate. Wade, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, I knew, what you know, I knew rain was coming. And it was the eighth inning. I was trying to get through the eighth without having to use Wade because I knew there was going to be a rain delay. And... You know, I'm like, okay, we put Ryan Matson out there. Come on, Ryan, oh, you can, you know, hold this fork for us. And ends up giving up a two run. We were, I think, ahead three to one at the time. Ended up giving up a, a, a two run homer and then a base hit. And now I'm like, okay, I can't let this game slip away. I got to bring Wade in. And I remember Wade, boom, boom, getting the last two outs and coming in. When he hit the, the, the top step, uh, it started pouring down rain. And, I was as frustrated. I, I, I can't really, I, I don't know if it's, I was mad. I was frustrated. I was uh, pissed off that it was raining, you know, it, because I knew that this was probably going to be a 20 minute rain delay, 25 minute rain delay. And my clothes are now sitting on the bench after, you know, getting hot. So as we got to the 20 minute mark, the 25 minute mark, they got under the 30 minute mark. I started getting madder and I started getting madder and we got to the 35 minute mark. And, you know, I walked in and I asked Wade, I said, you okay? And Wade goes, I'm fine. Man, I'm good. I'm, 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 don't worry about it. I got it. So I'm like, all right. Um, and I think it was like 45 minutes before we resumed. But when we did resume, the one thing that kind of made me feel better was seeing Lorenzo Cain score from first on Haas's double down the right field line uh you know that that made that made all that that upset mad fist up uh go away right there we had the lead again and and um you know if, if there's anybody that i would send out on the mound after a 45 minute rain delay it'd be wade davis with his determination his mindset uh, 
And um, he sure enough, he made it a little interesting, but uh, <laughs> it was sure tight. <laughs> hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. And guys, we have moved on from the American League Division Series. The Royals beat the Astros three games to two, and we are on to the American League Championship Series against the Toronto Blue Jays. I remember going into this series, the the, the Blue Jays had led the American League in home runs and runs scored. Um, that was a, you know, the, the Josh Donaldson was going to, I don't know if he was, the, the awards hadn't come out yet, but he he won the AL MVP that year. Jose Batista, Edward, Edward in, in Edwin Encarnacion. I mean, they, these guys had some hitters in that lineup, but I don't know if I remember thinking that the Royals, you know, were going to be in trouble in this series. I, I just, uh, especially after Game One, when they um, they did something so unusual, they they won a game from from the outset. They didn't have to come back and and, and, and win a game. They they won that thing five to nothing. Edison Volk has pitched a a terrific game. The bullpen finished it up and. Uh, do you remember what your what your thoughts were going into this series? That um, uh, at this point, were the Royals the, the charmed team and nothing was going to stop them, or were you still kind of skeptical about these guys? Um, I'll just say from my end, Blair. I remember feeling like, why shouldn't they win? But also, you know, no sure thing. But I mean, gosh, for what all all the what we had seen in the last in the 2014 postseason and the 2015 postseason leading us up to that, there was really, I think, little reason to be skeptical of them. Um, didn't know that that meant they would win. And the Blue Jays were certainly, uh, I think, a team to be reckoned with. But um, I guess I thought they're, they're, they were likely to win. I think, I think that's what I felt. It'd be interesting to look back in, in the time machine and, and realize I, I thought they would lose. But I, I don't think so. Yeah, I thought um, I thought this in real time, and I still believe it. I, and it doesn't make sense, really, if you look at the numbers. But I, I really thought the Astros were the best team that they played in either postseason. And and so for me, once they got past that, especially the way they did it, and, and look, Toronto was a great team. Remember that that was the year that they uh, they made the big deal for David Price, um, yep, you yeah. know, mid season, and and kind of filled a hole there. And you think, oh, okay, like you know, the, the, these guys are serious, uh, but. Yeah, I, I I felt better about them, the Royals in in that series than I did against Houston. With with the um, you know the, the obvious disclaimer that <laughs> baseball's weird. You know, um, I mean it, it's so weird that I remember I was talking to somebody uh, earlier. Uh, well, I guess it was late last week. Um, somebody that works with the Royals, and you know, it's easy to forget this now. But that 2015, the Pirates were loaded, um, and the, the Pirates were the team that internally. Um, you know, the Royals were talking about it like that, that. That'll be our toughest matchup. So you just you just never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Cubs ended up I think it was the Cubs that ended up beating the Pirates in the wild card game. I, I can't remember now. But I, I, well, I remember the you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. But I just remember thinking when the, the championship series for both leagues started that, um, you know, it would be the Royals and the Cubs in the World Series <laughs> and then ended up not being the case. So the Royals get through game one and. You know, if there's a you know, an important first critical moment in the series, it comes in game two when David Price has uh, – he gave up a leadoff single to uh, Alcides Escobar, which happened quite a lot in, you know, in, in, in the uh, 2015 postseason. Escobar uh, swinging at a first pitch and getting on base. But he retired the next 18. And oh. – uh, and, and he was dominant. And remember the the reputation, not just the reputation, but the you know the actual the stats. David Price was having no postseason success in his career. 
up to then, but he was about to flip the script and and then the strangest thing happened in the in, in the uh, bottom of the seventh. Uh, ben Zobers comes up and pops the ball to um, you know Sky's one, I guess, to uh, to right field, uh, short right field, and he's so disgusted he slams the bat down, <laughs> going going to first. And not that he's not running, but he's you know he's out, right? It's, it's um, you know it's just another out. David Price has chalked up another one. And yet, um, uh, moments later, the ball's on the field with uh, falls between Ryan Gones, the second baseman, and and um, and Jose Bautista in right field. And I think I think Gones was at fault here, if I remember. He was he looked like he had called for it, and then at the last second pulled off. And of course, Jose Bautista, being the great teammate that he is, looked in disgust <laughs> <laughs> at Ryan Gones. And then after the game, I, I read some quotes that yeah. but Bautista yeah. said, "Yeah, yeah, you. In fact, this, this stuff's on uh, on KansasCity.com in a in a retro <laughs> that uh, you saw the film. <laughs> you saw it. You write it. <laughs> right. right, but but so." So typical of the Royals of this vintage, they took full advantage of that. You know, base it, base it, base it. I remember Gordon. Gordon had a huge double that that uh, ended up being the the the, the ball that uh, that brought in. I, I want to say Mustakas. Anyway, that that put the Royals ahead four to three in the inning, and they didn't stop and until it was six to three. Do you guys remember Gordon's reaction when he got to second base? Uh, I don't. One of you guys may have written a column on that. I think Sam did. Did you yeah, write about he, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's probably the most emotional I've ever seen him on a baseball field. Yeah. He pumped, pumped his fist, right. Yeah. And got to second base and, and pumped yeah. his fist. And you never saw that from, no, from Alex. I mean, it was the kind of thing where if like Hosmer did it or Kane, you'd be like, Oh, okay. You know, it's a Tuesday or whatever, but uh, to see it from, from Gordon who will take anything, you know I mean? Like he hit the Homer, uh, I hope this isn't a spoiler alert, but later on, <laughs> maybe next week in our show, he'll hit a big homer, and uh, <laughs> he kind of like points to the sky as he's rounding first base, and it's just right. like, you know he's just so stoic, and that's uh, you know some guys fake it, right? Like some guys, uh, you know, they're they're trying to act the way that they think a ball player should act, um, you know, good, you know, on either end of the spectrum, trying to be stoic or trying to be. Uh, you know, fireball or whatever, but that's just who Alex is, you know, every, uh, on the baseball field, away from the baseball field. That that really stuck out, the way that he reacted there. That meant something. And, yep. you know, I, I wonder this, too. I, I don't know if he felt like this. And, of course, you have to win four games to win the series and, and all that. But but that was such a another statement of it really doesn't matter what situation they're in. They, they, they can always win. And I think that's another one of those sort of underrated comebacks of that postseason. I think that that really changed the complexion of the series. And, uh, you know, obviously going to Toronto after that um, with uh, the mercurial Johnny Cueto to be on the mound of the next game. I mean, it, it, it kind of kind of made a difference. But I but I think in a certain way, the series was was um, not necessarily won that day, but but the tone of it was absolutely set with that game. I don't I think, think so. it could be overstated. I'm sorry, but it can't be overstated about doing that against David Price. That that was just such a big thing. And like you said, Blair, like he, he was really rolling and, and they had nothing going. And to to be able to win the game with Price on the mound, um, and, and to do it in sort of like this vintage Royals fashion of, you know, you, you give these guys an inch and they take a mile kind of thing. I just I, I think that really was a pivotal moment for sure. Right, and think about this: if if the if the Blue Jays finish off that game, they tie it up, they tie the series, yeah. and it's heading back to Toronto or heading to Toronto with, uh, you know, with, with, the the Blue Jays would have gotten what they wanted out of Kauffman Stadium, a split in those first two games. And as it turns out, they, you know, they they go to Rogers Center and they win two out of three, and uh, and so they keep the series alive. In the Royals' win in Game Four, they they, they blew out uh, Toronto. It was fourteen to two. They uh, R. A. Dickey, the the knuckleballer, they smashed him around, and and uh, I think uh, Zobris had a home run in the first inning. I think the Royals ended up with four in the first, and so that was just a uh, just a dominant Royals victory that followed Toronto's first win in the series. Which I don't think was insignificant for the Royals. Remember, the Blue Jays got out to a big lead, and the Royals ended up getting into the Toronto bullpen. And and yeah. I think Morales hit a three-run homer in the ninth, and and, and anyway turned it to, turned it into an eleven to eight outcome. I, I just thought that was kind of a nice statement by the Royals that they weren't going to roll over, and 
And um, and and so they, the next day they turn around and win fourteen to two. Game five is a is a is a Blue Jays um, blowout. I think it was seven to one. Mm-hmm. So we come back for game six in Kansas City with the Royals up three games to two. And you talk about Vaha, you mentioned the you know maybe the underappreciated comeback victory by by the Royals in game two. I, I I've maintained that game six at Kauffman Stadium is really uh, of the I think the Royals won 22 postseason games in 14 and 15. And of course, you know, clinching a World Series victory, the wild card win, the game six or the game five or game four victory over the Astros in Houston with a great comeback. I, I don't know. I just think that game six of the American League Championship Series is really the, the most underappreciated of those triumphs for the Royals just because of the, um, uh, the, the things that happened late in that game. Just the dramatics were. I mean, it was just spine tingling what 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 occurred. So I'll set I'll set it up quickly. Um, uh, Ventura started the game and gave up a, a solo. He got a, it was staked to a lead, but gave up a solo home run to Batista um, in in the eighth. Ryan Madsen comes in with a three to one lead and he gives up a two run homer to Batista, who finally got got going in the series. He hadn't been doing much at all, much damage, but his second home run of the game, he ties the game at three. And then Ned Yost brings in Wade Davis. And we heard Ned Yost in the first part of this program talk about his mindset uh, of bringing in Wade Davis. Didn't want to do it, but felt like, you know, that the time was now. He had to go get him. And and he'd been using Davis in, in more than three out situations in, in the series or in the postseason, but brought him in. And Wade Davis gets out of the uh, out of the eighth, no further damage. So going into the bottom of the eighth, the Royals and Blue Jays are tied at three. But there is no bottom of the eighth for an hour, right? Yeah. That's when the that's when the rain delay hits, and uh, so the Royals come to bat in the bottom of the eighth, uh, and uh, and and then what happens is just I don't know. It's just to me one of the most fantastic plays in Royals history. Kane uh, leads off with a walk, and then Hosmer drops a you know a ball down the right field line that Batista goes and gets and turns and wheels to second base and. And um, and Lorenzo Cain never stops running from from first. He wasn't going on the pitch either. He he was he, he just had a nice lead and and went on contact and ended up scoring. And I, I, I've said this before. That is the loudest I've ever heard Kauffman Stadium in all the years that I've gone to games. There was when Cain crossed the plate with the slide. The cheer for the, uh, the the cheer on that play was as loud as I have ever heard the stadium and. What do you guys remember about that that particular moment? Uh, well, Sam, why don't you go on that? I, I've got well, a, a, a side point to make, but you go on that, Sam. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to make sure – like I don't want to just be hyperbole in the moment. but um, and, and I should say, spoiler alert, you might have something uh, <laughs> yes. more to say about this coming <laughs> up right. we'll, that, that we'll tease a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's one of the best baseball plays that I've ever seen. Um, it, it was – it was like this symphony of everything that the Royals were about. It, it was speed. It was daring. It was preparation. It was scouting. It, it, it was taking advantage of a very subtle weakness from the other side. I mean, it, it was everything that the, that Royals team for two years, uh, three, if you go back to their first winning season in, in 2013, it's everything that that group was about. And, you know, credit to all kinds of people, the, the advanced scouts, and Mike Jershley for uh, you know noticing that on on balls hit to right when when a runner even when a runner's on first Jose Batista had a tendency to just kind of blindly throw the ball back to second to keep the guy from to keep the batter from going for two. Um, it, it's not a terrible baseball play. Uh, it's a good baseball play when there's no runners on, um, but it's it's a little bit risky when there's somebody on base. But he would do it when the, even when a runner was on first. The Royals saw this. They thought if if we got somebody. On first with speed, Lorenzo came, and a ball gets down, you know, to this area of right field, which is exactly where Hosmer hit it. We're going to do it, and you, you watch that replay. And if you, if you Google it, MLB, uh, it's it's a video clip on MLB.com, and they, it is terrific. They have you know a bunch of different angles, and you can see they, they have an angle kind of from behind Batista, and you can see where Kane is when he throws it, and you know if you watch it back. It's crazy to say this, but a man scored from first on a single without going on the on the pitch, and it mm. wasn't close. 
It, <laughs> I mean, oh. he, he was safe by at least a second. You know, the, there was no tag. Uh, you know, I forgot who, who was playing catcher at the time, but, the, you know, he came up to get the ball to, to yeah. keep it from, from going back. And, uh, I mean, I'll just never – I'm with you. I, that was as loud as a, an outdoor baseball stadium can possibly get. It, it had everything in it, including Kane – sliding in and then jumping up, <laughs> punching the air. And that yeah. shot was on the next cover of Sports Illustrated. That And that cover, blown up to like three feet by five feet or something, is in the press box. You see it every every day when you get off the elevator. <laughs> uh, it's hanging right there on the wall. I mean, that's that just an e- iconic moment. If, if not for the wild card game, um, you know, that, that would be the game that sticks out the most from either postseason to me. Sam, you articulated it so well, though, about it being a snapshot of all the things that made that team what it is yeah, um, or what it was. And that was beautiful how you put it. I I, uh, I I think about the moment and just think about the, the karma in, uh, in sort of this being inflicted on Batista, too, though, with him just kind of <laughs> you know, he didn't flip the ball back in. Right. But I mean, he, he just he, he didn't throw the cutoff. Yeah. And um, after his. Uh, Failure to throw the ball into the stands when when he faked out a fan earlier earlier in the series. I think uh, that just just came together nicely for me. Um, and, <laughs> you really it, did not it, like Batista. <laughs> I remember that. That, was, that was great. <laughs> so anyway, that was uh, that, there was some harmony in the whole thing, and, and uh, it, it's it. I I remember moments I thought were similarly loud but i but i certainly can't say i remember thinking that was uh anything but as loud as it could be and sam you uh you're going to get into this a little bit more later in the week aren't you yeah um you know with uh <laughs> treatment like the buffalo no you know we're, we're gonna use all parts uh i talked to, to mike <laughs> Jersey, and uh that, <laughs> we'll have that on on a podcast and i think i'll make a column out of it as well and and he was you're- great like jersh I mean, Jersh is great no matter what. Um, He's one of my favorite people in baseball. But um, I I also thought that it was – I don't know what what the adjective here. I'll just say cool. It It was a cool thing that a third base coach could have that much of an impact on a game, especially one year after people were mad at him for not getting out yeah. and thrown out by a thousand feet at the plate. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, that's right. against the Giants. It was, right. it, you know, for, for a baseball man to spend his entire life, you know, in this sport, playing, coaching, managing for what, 15 years uh, yeah. in, in the minor leagues, I think it was before he got called up to Kansas city. And, you know, it's not fair for people like us, for fans, for anybody to distill a career that long that has touched that many people into one split second decision. It's just not, <laughs> it's just not fair. Like, I mean, he spent a lifetime in this game, but if we're going to do that, it, it's, it's just, it's a cool thing that it's, that he made the right call, you know, and that in that moment, that's going to define his career to many, um, he could not have shined any brighter, you know, with, with the preparation, with, you know, no stone unturned and, and making the call right there. It was just, uh, I, it just made me feel good for him. Yeah. So I mean, you mentioned uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Vine. No, just just add a quick point too. like, <clears throat> I think that uh, appreciating that moment with, with Jersh and, and sort of the, the, what became the Royals way. And I, I hate to harp on this too much, but I really appreciated sort of the feeling of good versus evil with the Blue Jays. I mean, they were, they were a hard, <laughs> they were a hard team to like uh, from, from at least from, from, from the impartial press box. Um, and, but I, I just, so I just kind of liked that, that, feeling of there it was really evil to cast them as the villains and uh i keep thinking about donaldson and volquez calling him a little baby and <laughs> it's kind of just bad blood a little bit between the teams so it, there was something a little little uh fun in, in being able to look at a guy like jersh as you know having having this moment for himself there too uh, a, a shining light a little bit well, as someone who has a, uh, a daughter who lives in Canada, I do not subscribe to the good versus evil uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to our good friends of the North. Uh, but, <laughs> just the Blue Jays, Blair. Just the, just the Blue Jays. <laughs> but I know exactly what you're talking about. That was There was a sense. So, Sam, you didn't remember the catcher. His name was Russell Martin, a good catcher. Yeah. And the reason I bring him up is he was the first batter for the Blue Jays in the top of the ninth. But um, uh, And so Wade Davis is back on the mound. 
Uh, Vahe, you spoke with Ned Yost uh, pre, uh, just a few days ago about the decision he had to make to to bring Wade Davis back after <laughs> what ended up being more than an hour because not only because of the delay, but then the Royals had to bat and it was a lengthy. You know, not, they only got the one run, but they had they, five or six guys came to the plate in that inning. It ended up being more than an hour between pitches for Wade <laughs> Davis and uh, and man. Um, they, so look. Uh, Russell Martin uh, singles to open the inning. He, he uh, the pinch run, steal second, steal third. Um, Davis uh, Wade Davis ended up walking the next guy. So first and third, nobody out, and um, and we, we know what happened. Um, what do you remember? What, what did you, what did Ned say about all this? Well, what I remember uh, about our conversation with with Ned was was his just absolute fury at the weather, like that the weather had, <laughs> yes. had betrayed him. It didn't come in the t- at the time he thought it would, or for the length he thought it would. And weather and, enthusiast Ned Yost. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. That's, that's the best point of all. I mean, he's a guy who really prides himself in studying that. I mean, heck, we've been in his office watching him take us through Apollo uh, moon landings, <laughs> right? And and certainly uh, he does pride himself on his analysis of the weather. But but he, it, you know, he did want to hold off. I think that that's a, a point that we need to make. But. Um, with Madsen giving up, was it actually back to back home runs? I guess. I mean, it was. It, no, it was. I think it was a two run homer for yeah, for Batista. It, it, it was single strikeout homer walk. From okay, that. okay, okay, um, and that's when Davis came in. Yeah, and you know, it it just it, it begged for him to come in and and uh, look because of Wade Davis's uh, makeup and and Sam has tested this ground before. He doesn't like to be called a cyborg, but. Um, <laughs> But I think there was something uh, uncanny in what he was able to do. You can't just do that, right? Get get hot, go, and then be cold for an hour. Um, but he did. And it, it was didn't amazing. start off right. Didn't start off well, right? I mean, when he came now, back out, yeah. If if you remember the big pitch in that inning, he struck he struck out Ben Revere. But on the on the strike two, he got a nice uh, break from the umpire, home plate umpire, and a ball that was probably a little bit out of the strike zone. And Revere was pissed. He was really mad at uh, at the umpire, and I think that affected the rest of his at bat. He ends up striking out on a slider, and then and then Wade Davis gets Josh Donaldson to ground out to, to Moose, and seems like a lot of series ended up with a grounder to Moose. And, yeah, um, sure. And 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 and, um, and that uh, and, and the Royals win the American League Championship Series. They're off to the World Series to take on the New York Mets and. Thank- Blair, can yeah, I tell one of my favorite stories real quick about do. this? Yeah, right, yeah. It happened right after this. Um, you know, they have the celebration on the field. And, uh, you know, we're all down there, you know, just grabbing whoever we can grab to, you know, for, for our stories. And, you know, everybody's kind of trickling back to the clubhouse. And, and I'm walking back and I'm following two players, two Royals players uh, through the tunnel. And one of them, I'll never forget this one. I'm just kind of grab the other one on the back and just goes, well, we bailed him out again, didn't we? <laughs> and I, don't, I still don't know in the moment I didn't know and I still don't know whether they were joking or not but it just doesn't matter either way I just thought that was one of the funniest things that I that I saw during either postseason oh man <laughs> well the, just the way that the, the the eighth and ninth innings played out and um and, and the emotion at Kauffman Stadium it was just an amazing night for for the, for the Royals and they win their fourth American League pennant and they are a few days away. They they knew at the time that the Mets had won the National League because they had swept the Cubs, and the Mets were hot, hot, hot coming into the World Series. And um, the next time that uh, us three get together, we will chat about the 2015 World Series between the Royals and the Mets. So, Sam Ellinger, Vahe Gregorian, thanks for uh, sharing your memories. Thanks, Blair. Thanks, Blair. That will do it for today. Thanks to our production staff of Derek Donovan, Savannah Smith, Randy Mason, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, and Chris Fickett. Tip of the cap to Sam Mellinger and Vahe Gregorian for sharing their memories of the 2015 American League Championship Series. Links to the stories we discussed can be found in the show notes. Hey, earlier in the episode, you heard me talk about the Sports Pass, and that offer still stands. 30 bucks for a year's worth of sports coverage. Come on, that's terrific. Here's an even better offer. Buy the entire Kansas City Star product. News, sports, features, commentary, analysis, the whole bit. You get all of the stories written by my talented colleagues, and the details can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. That's account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. Included in the Sports Pass or the KC Star subscription 
is Mellinger Minutes for the Ears. That's the podcast version of Sam's popular early week interactive column. This week, he's talking to Royals third base coach Mike Gershley about sending Lorenzo Cain in for the winning run in the American League Championship Series. So you'll want to hear that. Hey, and there's something else. Maybe you already subscribe and you want to do more. You can help us there also. For the past two months, no one has covered or told the story of the Kansas City area during the COVID pandemic like the Kansas City Star. And there is a place to simply make a tax deduction contribution to the Star that will help us continue to report on the coronavirus and how it's impacting our communities. To donate, go to givebutter.com slash Kansas City Star. That's givebutter, G-I-V-E-B-U-T-T-E-R dot com slash Kansas City dot com. All help is greatly appreciated, whether it's a sports pass, the full subscription or a donation. You're helping us with our news coverage and helping us deliver products like Sports BKC. We'll be back on Wednesday. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.